adaptable things to do with synthetic bulk hair is to make it into wax for an easier, quicker installation or for use in other hair pieces. So that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be going over how to make synthetic wax. Now this is, you can also do this with human hair. The only difference is that human hair has a cuticle and that has to be respected. Synthetic hair can be doubled over in the middle, whereas human hair can only be doubled over about yay much at the top to make that wet. Because if you change the direction of the cuticle, the cuticle has almost like shingle-like properties like a roof. And if you have those in opposing directions, you'll end up with too much friction and it'll actually mat on you because of that. So the first thing that you're going to do to make a wet is you're going to decide how long you need your track to be. It's best if you don't have to cut these. If you do have to cut them, it's, it's okay, but you're going to need to add a bit of glue, typically like a nail glue or uh, like a, a liquid crazy glue or something like that to hold the ends really tight so they don't unravel. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure what you are fitting the left to and you're going to draw a line, like so. I'm going to be making a 5-inch weft because it's going to be part of a 3-piece clip set that I'm making. So once you have drawn your line, you then simply cut out the paper so that you have a strip with your line on it. Now, if you need a line that's longer than your paper, that's okay too. What you're going to do is you're going to take that line and you're just going to make a second line. And then you're not going to tape them together or anything, but you're just going to, when you sew them, you're just going to continue feeding that paper in so that it continues your line. So, this is an adaptation of what's making that I've put together through several different other people's methods. So. You'll see things that maybe you've seen before and are a little bit familiar, but there'll probably be some differences too. The setup that I'm using is a triple needle. This is uh, an uncommon needle. It's more common in quilting stores. You probably won't be able to find them at your local sewing store. If you do, that's really awesome. Um, sometimes you can find doubles instead of triples. That'll work too. You just need to make a few more passes to make that work really reinforced and hold up. Uh, in order to thread your triple needle, I've used three bobbins on my spool holder and thread it just like normal, and then all three threads go down into the needle. I'm going to separate a little bit of hair to make it easier to work with. I'm going to take the paper and feed it in so that the line is just before your feed dog. Now this, this fiber is going to be doubled over in thickness, so make sure that you spread it out fairly thin, otherwise your webs are going to turn out fairly thick. Which is fine if that's what you're after, but if you want it to be a, re a realistic thickness, then try to get, spread it out a little bit. Okay, just going to do a couple stitches. Now just word to you, my stitch length is set at one and a half, and my tension is set at five, and there is no zigzag. Okay, so I'm just going to go in for a little bit, and I'm actually going to back up just a little bit to reinforce that stitch. And I put more fiber up here than I'll actually feed in. So I'm just spreading it out as I go. If you have hairs that get on top of the feed dogs, just pull them back. Just want to make sure everything's going underneath. and grab more hair. I think I might have grabbed a little too much. That's okay. Just won't 
Feed it in.